Sean Baker is one of the most original filmmakers working today, and alongside The Florida Project, he has also directed several other films, including the critically acclaimed Tangerine, which he also shot, as well as Starlet. The Florida Project has been his biggest film so far, and today I'll talk about the cinematography behind it. I'm also planning to make a How Sean Baker Shoots a Scene video soon, so stay tuned. Today, I'll go over the preparation of the Florida project, as well as break down a few shots and talk about the equipment that they used to achieve the look. In an interview about the film, Alexis Sabe, the cinematographer, said that he loves to work with natural light, and because the majority of the film was set outside, it allowed him to do so. They then used the colours of the environment and costumes to create the colour palette of the film, the main colour used being purple, which often represents fun and youthfulness, creating a feeling that everything is fine. In contrast, the motel depicts a very dark and rough reality for the characters, but Baker's use of colour juxtaposes that and lets us think that everything is much better than it actually is. Before starting production on the Florida project, Baker and Zabe made a short film for Kenzo titled Snowbird which they shot completely on the iPhone and allowed them to work together before the feature. When watching, you notice that a lot of the film is shot quite low to the ground and often using low angles when the kids are talking to the adults. This is one of the techniques that Baker and Zabe used to create separation between the adult and child worlds. There are even scenes in which Haley is photographed using a low angle as to say that she is also acting childish, whereas all of the other adults in the film are shot at eye level. An example of them shooting lower to the ground is this shot where we see Haley and Mune eating. We are at eye level, but from Mune's point of view, it lets us see the world from her perspective, which also explains the very vibrant colours from the grass to the sky. We are also kept at eye level whilst Mune is walking with Haley. Another thing to note is the fact that they rarely use high angles when shooting the kids, as this is a film surrounding their reality. This frame is an example of that, in the fact that we are kept at eye level and the foe has been brought down to her, instead of us being brought up to his. This simple shot showing the foe on the balcony creates a very relaxed mood. We have the just gone sunset creating a deep blue in the sky that contrasts the purple of the motel, the leading lines showing the rest of the hallway, and a collected character. I can't not mention the incredible sunsets throughout the film, and they do also play a part in making the audience feel something. Much like the use of colour in the motel, the sunsets create a very dreamlike feel, making us feel as though not everything is as bad as it seems. The bright and warming colours make it appear to be inviting, even though we know it not to be. The final scene of the film shows Mune and Jancy running through Disneyland. Again, we are kept low to the ground and in a low angle looking up at the characters. We stay close to them until the very end, where they run off into the crowd leaving us with a wide shot of the Disney castle, and then cutting to black, showing us that even if it is only for a few minutes, Mune is free from her parents. They shot the film on the Aria Alexa Mini for the night scenes, and Panavision Panaflex Millennium XL2 for the day scenes, using Panavision's E-Series Glass. However, Baker shot the last scene on the iPhone 6S, using an anamorphic adapter, the E-Series lenses are the ideal A-camera set as they have a wide range of focal lengths and deliver a sharpness that is not too clinical. They opted to use the Alexa Mini for the night exteriors as 35 was giving them a very seedy and bleak look, the opposite of the rest of the film. Whereas with the iPhone, they had no choice but to use it as they needed to go into Disney World undercover. Like with Tangerine, Baker used an anamorphic adapter so that it matched the resolution of the 35 and Alexa Mini footage. In order to match it to the rest of the film, they pre-graded it, recorded it out to film, and then scanned it back to digital, allowing the grain created to tie into the rest of the movie. They also did this with the Alexa Mini footage, so that there wasn't any artificial grain in the film. For the film stock, they used Codex Vision 350D, 250D, and 500T. 50D allows for high contrast daylight exteriors and a lot of flexibility in post. 250D has outstanding skin tones and colour reproduction, whilst 500T allows for extended highlight latitude, meaning that you can follow the action into brighter lights and not worry about it being blown out. 
I hope you enjoyed this short cinematography breakdown of the Florida Project. If you have a recommendation of a film that you would like to see me break down, leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.